In this video tutorial, I'm going to cover a highly requested topic, and this is how to program iOS applications in Windows. And the reason why this has been highly requested is that there is no official way of writing app iPhone applications on Windows. And after Apple has made a third-party development for the iPhone legal, there have been a blitz of third-party SDKs released. And I've tried all of them, well, most of them, and I like some and dislike some, but in the end, I chose the open plug method. And this is the reason why I chose it. The open plug uh, method it uses a cross compiler for the Flex of Framework, which is an open source uh, SDK for Flash, which is aimed and designed for developers. And for those of you who don't know, uh, Flex applications are written in, a, in an integrated development environment called Flex Builder or Flash Builder, depending on the version. And this is very similar to developing applications for Visual Studio. And when we develop uh, Flex applications, we use the ActionScript and MXML uh, languages for programming and design, which is very similar to Visual C Sharp and XAML or WPF uh, applications. So Visual Studio users will feel right at home. And also iPhone applications developed using Flex can be business applications as well as games unlike the other SDKs that I mentioned, like Adobe Flash or Dragonfire. Okay, so let's get started by Google searching a Flash Builder um, so that we can download the integrated development environment. Uh, you have the option of downloading the 30-day trial, or if you are currently a student or a freelance developer, you can actually get a free license uh, by doing a search for free RIA and clicking the first link. And then it will give you the option to sign up and you will get an email giving you a free uh, product key. Okay, so after you have Flash uh, Builder installed, then we're going to go back to Google and we're going to do a search for Open Plug. And once we're here, we're going to click on the first link and then we're going to go up to Products and we're going to find uh, Ellipse Studio and we are going to proceed to download this application. Please note that it will require you to create an account at some time. So once we have uh, that installed, we're going to go back up to start. We're going to go to Open Plug, Ellipse Studio, and Ellipse for Flash Builder 4. And then you should see a command prompt, and you should see Flash Builder loading. Then we're going to select a new project, Ellipse Project, and we're going to name this uh, whatever we want. And then we're going to keep that standard application and click finish. Then we're going to go into the patch, package explorer. We're going to go into source, default pro, package. We're going to select uh, the MXML file. And once we're uh, there, we're going to see uh, the dot code interface load up. And once we're here, uh, we can proceed uh, to go to uh, properties. And here we're going to select target devices and we will select a development for the iPhone. And once we're here, we can optionally add an application icon. If you don't add one, it will give you a default one, which I will show. Um, and then we're going to have to uh, select a name. And then we're going to choose application version. And we're going to choose base SDK, which is the lowest firmware that your the device will be allowed to install on. I'm going to choose the 4.1 firmware. Um, then you can optionally give a company name you can optionally uh, fill out these other options. And we're going to set the UI interface initial orientation to portrait. And we're going to want to generate an IPA. Or we can optionally output to Xcode for a layer development. And then we need to choose an iTunes icon. And then once you have all that, we're going to click OK, apply and OK. Alright, uh, so now um, we're going to click on this form that we have and we're going to change the width and the height to that of the iPhone. And so once we're here, we're going to start developing an application. And you're going to notice that uh, development in Flash Builder or Flex Builder is very similar to Visual Studio. On one side, we have the toolbox. Uh, which we have all of our controls that we can use and on the other side we have our properties window and our solution explorer or package explorer is right above the toolbox 
And then as you see, uh, we can resize controls uh, just like in Visual Studio. So as a typical first app, I'm going to uh, design a simple uh, click me. Uh, please note that this is not a tutorial uh, for the Flex framework or the MXML or ActionScript languages. But if you want me to create a tutorial just on those languages and development for the iPhone, uh, please leave a comment below. Okay, so I've designed uh, my simple user interface. And then I'm going to proceed uh, to give it some properties. You can give them properties uh, directly in code, or uh, you can give them uh, using the properties window. And I'm going to give it a label, which is equivalent to uh, the text. And I'm going to change that to click me. And same for the label. I'm going to change its uh, text property to uh, click above. Okay, once we do that, we're going to have to add some code. Uh, once you look at this code, you're going to see that looks a lot like XAML or WPF application uh, design. So we have tags here, and in these tags, we have all of our properties for our different controls, including the form itself. So we're going to add an ID property, which is equivalent to the name, if we're thinking about Visual Studio, and all of our objects will be referenced using the ID. And unlike a Visual Studio, uh, for a Flash, we have to create our, I mean, for Flex, we have to create our own event handlers. To do that, we're going to select our button control, and in here, we're going to type in a touch tab, and this is the name of the event we're going to write, and we're going to uh, create an event handler for this called click. And in order to write our code, we're going to have to create a new tag called MX script. And in here is where we're going to write all of our action script code. And this looks very similar to C sharp. So we're going to type in private function, the name of the function, our parenthesis, and a return value if needed. Since we have none, we're going to call it void. And here we're going to type in label one dot text equals hello world. And then our classic semicolon, just like in developing a C sharp. Okay, once we have this, we can uh, save our project and we can preview it in an emulator. And it will look like this. Okay, uh, once you finish uh, developing your application, um, you're going to want to deploy this for um, installation onto your device. So what we're going to do here is we're going to click this uh, little icon above here and we're going to select my first app or the name of your application and it will build an IPA and save it to um, your files in your project. And please note that this creates an unsigned IPA. So in order to get this on your device, you either need to buy an Apple developer license for $99 or you need to jailbreak your application. And I'll demonstrate, I mean jailbreak your device. I'll demonstrate how to do that. So I'm running on 4.1 with an MC uh, 3G iPod Touch. So I'm going to use the line rain method to jailbreak uh, my device. And it doesn't matter what method you use, as long as in the end you get a Cydia running on your device. So uh, once we have a Cydia on our device, we're going to uh, proceed to launch Cydia. And once we launch Cydia, we're going to go down and click on Manage. Now once we click on Manage, we're going to click on Sources. And then we're going to go to the top and select Edit. And then we're going to select add. Once we select this, a dialog box will appear. We're going to want to add the URL acidia.hackylo.us. And for those of you who don't know, uh, this is the repository for install us. So we're going to have to add anyway uh, for the security warning. Once we add this, we're going to go into repository. And instead of downloading an illegal install us uh, application, we're instead going to download AppSync. And this will allow us to get our unsigned app onto our device. And this is perfectly legal, unlike install us. So once we have AppSync installed, you don't actually have to do anything. Instead, we're just going to go straight to iTunes, and we're going to pop our IPA, which is in our projects folder, into iTunes. And then once it's in iTunes, we're actually going to sync it uh, to our device. OK, so here is my finished application running on my iPod Touch 3G. Notice the default logo 
and the advertisement. And note, uh, this advertisement does give you revenue sharing. And you see, as you see, the app is fully functional. And that's it for this tutorial. For more tutorials, please go to thehackersjournal.com.